Hello everyone, I'm Alberto Racca, a PhD student at the Department of Engineering at the University of Cambridge. Today I will be presenting my latest work, the Automatic Differentiated Physics in Four Microstate Network. This work has been done in collaboration with my supervisor, Luca Magri, at Imperial, and it, is, and it is being supported by the Engineering and Physical Science Research Council and the Cambridge Trust. So the content of this presentation are taken from the paper with the same title, which will appear later this year in lecture notes in computer science, and can be found now at the, in archive at this link that I've shown below. So let's start the presentation with an outline of the talk. So the first thing we the first thing will be the problem statement, which consists in the reconstruction of hidden states in dynamical system. Then we see the tools with which, with which we tackle the problem of the reconstruction, which is the automatic differentiated physics in four microstate network. We then proceed with this showing some results in the reconstruction in the chaotic Lorentz system, and we finish with the conclusions. So what is the reconstruction of hidden states in dynamical systems? We start from a dynamical system of known equations, which for the entire state y of the system are y dot equal f of y, where y, y dot is the time derivative and f of y is the nominal operator. We are in a situation in which we have data only on a subset of y, which is the observed state x, and we want to reconstruct the remaining part of the state, the hidden state h. An example is shown here at the bottom of the slide. So here we have the three variables of the Lorentz system in an interval in time. And here time is expressed in Lyapunov of times, where a Lyapunov of time is the inverse of the dominant Lyapunov exponent of the system, which in turn is the exponential rate at which cross by trajectories diverge one from the other in chaotic systems. So here we may be in a, in a situation in which we have data only for P1 and P2, so here in the continuous lines, and we want to reconstruct P3. And at the same time, we know the governing equations for the entire state, so P1, P2, and P3. So how do we take, tackle this problem? We start from what we have, so namely the data for the observed state X, which has been discretized in time and here shown at the generic time step Ti, and feed it as an input for an ecostate network. The ecostate networks have been proposed by Jäger and Haas in 2004, and a practical guide was proposed later on by Lukos in 2012. So the deepest time network consists in a large reservoir, which is indicated at each time step by its, by its state, the reservoir state R, which at each time step is updated as a function of the current input and its previous value through the two matrices W in, the input matrix and the state matrix W. These two matrices are fixed and randomly generated, and therefore they are not trained when the network is optimized. After the reservoir state is computed, for each time step, the output is computed as a linear combination of the reservoir state for the output matrix W of X. And the output at each time step is the, the prediction for the observed state at the next time step. The matrix W out is the only trainable matrix of the system. It is computed by minimizing the mean square error with respect to data. So here there is the predicted output and this is the data. Given the specific lay layout of ecostate networks, computing the output matrix W out in a model free architecture, so when there is no knowledge of the governing equation, consists in a linear optimization problem, where W out X is obtained by solving this linear system, which is shown here on the right in this slide. So here there is R, which is the horizontal concatenation of the reservoir states at different time steps. This X, capital X, is the same for the inputs and gamma is a regularization parameter. So this can be done when we have data for the state that we want to predict. So what can we do for the hidden state for which we don't have any data, but we only know the governing equation. So we compute the hidden state at the next time step, again, as a linear combination of the reservoir state R through another matrix, W of H, that we want to train as well. This time, we minimize another type of error using the physics informed architecture proposed by Don et al. in 2020. What we minimize is the error of the network with respect to the physics, in the part, in specifically the mean square error with respect to the for the time derivative of the output of the network with respect to the right hand side of the equations. So let's analyze this term more in depth because this is no more 
uh, linear optimization problem and, and requires some nonlinear optimization, like for example, stochastic gradient descent. But before that, yes, these terms uh, uh, require some considerations. So the, the second term, uh, so the evaluating the right hand side of the governing equations at the output at the entire state, predict an entire state y is trivial. We just plug in y hat the prediction in the equations. What is more complicated, let's say, to compute is the time derivative of the output y hat dot. So in echostate networks and in general in recurrent neural networks, the time dependence of the system is implicit in the inputs. And therefore, when we compute the time derivative of the output, we have to differentiate with respect to the input. However, as we can see here from the reservoir state update equation, there are the current connections inside the reservoir. And this generates long time dependencies. This happens because, I mean, RTI is dependent on RTI minus one, which in turn is dependent on X, X TI minus one, and then RTI minus two, and so forth back in time. This means that each output and therefore its derivative is a function of all the previous inputs due to the till the current one. So for TI plus one, we have to differentiate with respect to the input at time ti, ti, ti minus one, ti minus, minus two, and so forth. The time series are very long. I mean, in the order of thousands or tens of thousands, and therefore this results in a large computational cost. To bypass this problem, we compute the derivative of the reservoir state instead. So we compute r dot. r dot and y hat dot are related linearly through the matrix the output matrix W out, which is just a concatenation of W out X and W out H. Since R dot is independent of W out, which is the only trainable um, matrix of the system, it can, compute, it can be computed only once at the beginning when we are initializing the network, and it does not change during the optimization. Moreover, we can use automatic differentiation and compute R dot recursively, which means that we can compute in the same fashion of the reservoir state, which at each time step is updated only as a function of the current input and previous value of the reservoir state. We can also compute the time derivative of the reservoir state as a function only of the, of the current input and the previous value of the reservoir state. And this, yeah, I mean, this additionally increases the, the speed with which the algorithm uh, works, let's say. So here are some results regarding the accuracy of the uh, derivative computed with automatic differentiation and a comparison with the forward over the network. We studied the comparison with this numerical scheme because it was the one used in the original work, in, originally in the work of Donico, where they proposed the physics in form of um, architecture. So we study a case in which the entire state Y is observed. So there is no reconstruction. This is just a test case to study the accuracy of the derivative. So for now, we do not focus on reconstruction. And we study the Lorentz system in a 10,000 points that data set. So for different sizes of the reservoir, shown here on the right with the neurons on the x-axis, we can see that the accuracy of computing the derivative with automatic differentiation with respect to the right-hand side of the equation can be from four to seven of our orders of magnitude more accurate than computing it with forward order. So, I mean, the increase in accuracy by using the standard numerical method is significant. And another point to, to stress out, let's say, in this slide is that both time derivatives are computed with respect to the same way hat. So, uh, for the same network, which provides the same prediction for the entire state, then the derivative of the network when computed with automatic differentiation is up to seven orders of magnitude more accurate than forward order. Finally, we can see that there is no improvement for the accuracy of uh, forward order as the size of the reservoir increases. This is due to the fact that the error of the numerical approximation of the derivatives is already dominant for smaller networks. And when the accuracy of the prediction increases with larger networks, there is still no improvement in the accuracy of the derivative. So here, there are instead some results for the reconstruction in the Lorentz system. So we study three different test cases, which 
can differ one from the other by the observed state that is available to the network. So in the first case, we have as an observed state P1 and P3, and we want to predict P2. In the second case, we have P1 and P2, and want to, re to, to predict to reconstruct P3. And in the third case, we have only P1, and we reconstruct at the same time P2 and P3. We have 10,000 10, points uh, training set and a 10,000 points test set. The first one spans the interval from 0 to 100 upon of times, and the second one from 100 to 200 upon of times. Some results are shown here on the right, where we plot the reconstruction of both P2 and P3 in panel A and panel B for the different test cases. So the reconstruction of P2 is very accurate, and we also get a, a fairly accurate reconstruction for P3 when there is a mismatch mostly only in the minima of P3. In, in panels, C, D, E, and F plot the probability density functions for the training set in C and E and the test set for B and F. And by comparing the results in C with the results in D and the results in E with the results in F, we can see that the algorithm and the, I mean, the network is able to reconstruct the hidden states both in the training set and in the test set. This means that the, uh, our network is able to reconstruct the hidden state also on unseen data, which is the test set. So here there are some more quantitative results regarding the reconstruction with a comparison between the forward Euler approximation of the derivative and the automatic differentiation scheme that we propose in the APA DSM. So here again, there is the reconstruction of P2 in A and B and the reconstruction of P3 in C and D. Results for automatic differentiation in B and D and the forward Euler in A and C as a function of the number of neurons in the reservoir. We assess the reconstruction through the normalized root mean square error for the hidden state. So let's start with the the reconstruction of P2. And we can see by comparing A with B that automatic differentiation is able to improve the accuracy of the normalized root mean square error by more than one order of magnitude in some test cases. More, and I mean, mostly in the training set, which is indicated by the continuous line, while the test set is indicated by the dashed dotted lines, automatic differentiation is able to significantly improve the accuracy of the reconstruction. In the reconstruction of P3, the two methods perform similarly, as you can see by the fact that panel C and D are very similar one to the other. And this, I mean, this is due to the fact that the error that limits the reconstruction accuracy is not due to the accuracy with which we are computing the derivative, but to the specific uh, governing equations in the learning systems. In the learning system, this happens because as he, I mean, here we show as an example of why the reconstruction for P3 is harder than the reconstruction of P2, as we can also see not only by the fact that C and D are similar, but also by the fact that the normalized root mean square error is orders of magnitude different between, I mean, the reconstruction of P2 and P3. So in general, let's say, for example, that we have the observed state for P1 and P2 uh, and want to reconstruct P3. So we are in this area for the minima of P3, and here there is the same time series for all three components. We can see that both the derivatives and the data for P1 and P2 in this specific area are close to zero, which means this means that, I mean, the error in the governing equations is small in all terms, apart P dot three equals to minus beta L P3. And this means, I mean, in why when they are all equal to zero, the observed state and also their derivatives, there is no, I mean, it's complicated, let's say, for the network to extract the information about P3. And this is what limits the accuracy in these areas of the signal. So it's not a matter of the accuracy with, of the derivative, or now we compute the derivative, but mostly on the form of the governing equation. This may be interesting and to be kept in mind for more complex simulations in which let's say the reconstruction may be, may be, let's say the accuracy of the reconstruction may be limited not by the tools that we employ, but by the equations that we are using to enforce the physics. So finally, here are the conclusions. So we propose the automatic physics and inform ESN 
to compute the derivative time derivative to, of the network using automatic differentiation in order to enforce the uh, governing equation. We've seen that computing the derivative of the network with automatic differentiation is accurate and computationally cheap because there is no need to, I mean, the, the time derivative can be computed only once during the initialization of the network. We showcased the uh, network in the reconstruction of hidden states in a chaotic dynamical system, and we've shown that our algorithm inputs the normalized root mean square error by up to one order, more than one order of magnitude with respect to the existing architectures. And finally, uh, for future work, we study the autonomous prediction of the state. This means that contrary to what we have studied so far, so when the input to the system is data at each time step, we will study a configuration of the ecosystem network in which the output is fed back as an input for the next time step. In this way, the network will be able to evolve autonomously and meanwhile predict the agent states in an autonomous manner. So that was it. Thank you all for your attention.